Hi, Sarah, and hi, Bassam. Is that how I pronounce your name? It's Bassam. Bassam. So, Tickling Giants. Like, when I first read the title of the movie, I'm like, what is, what is this? And it's amazing. This documentary is just, I was, like, so nervous, but also very, very proud of what you've done, Bassam. Like, so, it's a satire. It's you created a show in Egypt that was during the Revolutionary War, and it was... The, the revolution, there was no war. <laughs> That's right. It was a revolution. <laughs> yes. No war. Yes. And The Daily Show was basically who you looked up to, or like, you know, you wanted to kind of like be the John Stewart of Egypt. Tell us why and how it all started. Well, I, um, um, I was... Just like a, another doctor, a surgeon who was just doing his job in uh, in the square, uh, treating people, uh, mending for, to people's wounds. And uh, uh, when I would go back home, there was two kind of I would discover there two kind of rea realities: the reality that in the square and the reality that is in the, the in television. And when the dust settled and the revolution, kind of like at that time, quote unquote, succeeded, uh, people wanted to go back and and see how. Uh, the media brainwashed them, how the media lied to them. And I thought that the best way to do it is to use satire in order to expose that and to tell people that not to trust those faces and those talking heads again, to be more mindful about what kind of news and what kind of um, uh, news outlet that they are listening to. And um, I was inspired by John Stewart because I was watching him for a big portion of my life. and. Uh, uh, I used what I thought that uh, you know I learned from there, and it was very uh, it was a very amateurish it was very it's a very uh, amateur um, effort that turned into a TV show afterwards. Yeah, it like started off as like a YouTube channel, like just in a room with a little background, and then you had this whole live stage built for you. It was amazing. Yeah, it was a great uh, journey and this is what Sarah have actually documented. Amazing. I know. Sarah, you you were part of the Daily Show, right? You I still am. Yeah, I've worked at the Daily Show since 2005. I'm a senior producer there. <gasps> so, what made you like how did you guys meet? Essen came to observe the Daily Show in 2012 and uh, they just were gonna see how we did things and we'd never had someone from another country just kind of come in to observe before so I was finding it interesting to, to talk to them and just hear about how he and his team do things and kind of the environment in which they were doing the online show and uh, I just couldn't imagine doing the same thing that I do with such high stakes and, yeah. and the potential repercussions so I immediately found it very inspiring and I also w was thinking about the fact that Bassam was a doctor still at the time yeah. and I couldn't imagine John Stewart being a heart surgeon during the day and then <laughs> at night doing our show and I uh, just was enjoying talking to them and I found it very interesting that two of the producers of the four of them who came were women and I was really curious what it would be like to be my counterpart at, at a comedy show in the Middle East. So I asked him if I could make a movie, and he said yes. How, so how long did you document all of this? Uh, we, from, I was involved starting in 2012, and we acquired footage from earlier from a producer that came on board named Mazir Bahari, who had uh -huh. been shooting with Bassam already. And um, we shot from 2012 through 2015, and then edited for a year and um, we premiered at Tribeca last year. So this year has been all about distribution and trying to make sure that there are opportunities for people to see Tickling Giants and, and discuss the themes in the film. Yeah, and you know, like I come from a Vietnamese background and my mom came with me to the screening. Oh, cool. And so I asked her, I'm like, mom, was this how it was like during the Vietnam War? And she's like, yeah, this was kind of like how it was. So, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of touched us a little bit because it was really sad to see how corrupt it, it is, but like how the media portrayed certain things and to have you, Bassam, like making jokes and like people wanting to, you know, just 
having some hope and giving people life and like laughter during such a hard time is just something amazing. Well, thank you. I mean, uh, I, I, I get a very um, embarrassed when people come at me and said, uh, hey, you're, you're amazing, you're an inspiration. Because I also have a lot of people coming up to me. It's like, oh, you're the reason why democracy failed. Because I made fun of the... I kind of like, I have this kind of... I don't let myself um, get affected too much with like extremes of opinion. Because that will actually drive me crazy. Yeah. Uh, just, we just, me and Sarah, talking about like being the subject of an ext- uh, continuous evaluation and criticism. And even praise. It kind of puts... Uh, a stress on you and um, Where, wherever he goes in his life he's still being evaluated like by people who whether love them. me or hate me yeah. like you're the best thing ever you're the worst thing that ever walked on the face of the earth it's just like it's the too extreme because yeah. uh, it's kind of like people take their frustrations or hopes on me and uh, for uh, as for the praising part I, I, I think I'm kind of I I, I, I really uh, I don't see all that I uh, when people say like you're courage, you're, you're courageous, you're, you're inspiring, you did. I mean, I, honestly, when I was in the middle of all of this, I was just thinking of using satire to bring on a message. I didn't think of like how courageous this is or how brave this was. I, I, I didn't. I didn't really think of it. I just thought of the process of how doing uh, the best show. Mm-hmm. And how how you how to be uh, used satire in the best way? I didn't. I really didn't think of all of those uh, labels that people are bestowing on me, whether good or bad. I know. Like, what? How about after watching the documentary? How do How do you feel now? I mean, uh, are you like feels like the best thing ever? Right. <laughs> well, uh, what, what what the documentary serves is. It's that it is actually it's what it's his name implies. It's a documentary. Mm-hmm. It documents a very important um, period of history, whether a personal history or a, a general history of a whole nation, uh, in a way that is not usually. Uh, in a way, it tells the story in a very unusual way through satire, through humor, through personal stories. So it is. I feel proud that this is a, a a piece of art that actually tells the story, but yet I cannot. Uh, it's just like it's. It feels very um, strange and weird for when people, kind of, flatter me, saying how great I was and how courageous and how I went through because I really can't register that yet. It's very difficult for me. Because watching it, I was so scared that something bad was going to happen. Like and spoiler alert. No spoiler uh, alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> he's still there. he's still there. He's actually in the, you see him, so he, yes. he, he doesn't die. He does Spo- not die. Spoiler alert. He doesn't die. Yeah, no. Like I was just so scared. I'm like, oh my god, what if bomb hits? Like, you know. Well, I mean, actually, that's actually that says a lot about the quality of the movie. Yeah. Because you know the end point. You know that I uh, that nothing bad would happen to me. Exactly. You know that I am safe here in the United States. Mm-hmm. You know that I have been like up and coming and all around so you know yes and you know what happens in the revolution you know yes. where it ends and exactly. you know that the dictatorship takes over and yet you're compelled to watch which makes this an incredible movie exactly sarah <laughs> it's all because of you yes. well i we had a, a wonderful team and uh technicolor came on to executive produce the film so we were able to get a, a great team of editors and researchers and translators and animators so um there, there was a, a whole group behind making Tickling Giants that, that made it as strong as it is. Because it's, because he's so funny and his show, the show, um, is hilarious. But you also bring like co- comedy to this documentary, and it, it's pretty funny. Like you know, like sometimes when you there's like a flash of news, how the the Egyptian or the Middle Eastern news would like curse at each other, and it's like crazy but like it's really funny like when you insert it and when you insert those yeah we we tried to figure out the best way to balance um the really serious story with humor and so when we were cutting it we would try to think oh how would his show deal with this or what are ways to to either break the tension when that felt right or to take out the jokes when it felt like you don't want to undercut the story of, of what's happening 
But um, yeah, we had a lot of fun in the edit trying to come up with playful ways to explain the story as it was unfolding. And what you were mentioning about um, your mom relating yeah. to the story, it's been very cool. Like last night, a woman from Syria came up to me and a woman from Hungary saying they related to it. We had someone a couple weeks ago from China at a screening yeah. saying that they related to it. So And uh, in New York? A whole family from uh, Tahiti. From where? The Tahiti. Uh, Tahiti. No, uh, uh, no. Uh, Tahiti. Tahitians have it. Ta- Tahiti. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I don't know. I don't remember that. Um, no, the uh, whole family okay. came from like the, the island, right? Ta- is it Haiti? Haiti. 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 Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Haiti. Tahiti is actually how we say it in Arabic. So. Oh, okay. Uh, so, oh, okay. So, 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 sorry. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to say this again. So like in New York, like a whole family from Haiti came and they were crying oh, wow. after the show. Like uh, like a father, um, a mother, their mom, his mom, and the their kids. And they came to me as like you remind us with so much. Time. I know. But, I mean, one thing that's kind of been cool to see is that the story is about Boston's experience in Egypt, but it's kind of a universal idea of how people in all different cultures value free speech and and use comedy to to help process things that are going on. I know, but like I still can't believe you had the courage to do all of that. Again, there was no courage involved. It was just being involved in the process <laughs> and trying to I think the, the I think the courage I mean being courageous is actually doing your the best job. Yeah. Doing your job. And I think that's cor- courageous enough and that's brave enough and we were doing our job. We were doing what satire should be done. And making and trying to hold authority and um, media accountable, and uh, we didn't we didn't think of ourselves as freedom fighters or brave or or vigilantes. We we just thought that like if this was not done right, we're gonna be betraying our profession. And I think that I think uh, that that uh, that was the shared sentiment. I I didn't believe I didn't think of myself of like I'm, I want to do this because I want to get a Nobel Prize. Yeah. I want to do this because this is my job to give the people uh, as much that they, my my best shot every time. So no fake news, basically. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> um, and how about your family? How are they adapting to, you know, the states? And then how about your brother back in Egypt? Uh, my brother is doing well in Egypt. I uh, my family, you know, little kids adapt very easily, and uh, you know, America is not such a tough. A place to adapt to, yeah. you know, you just have to. It's just like it's just like the the initial logistics that you need to figure it out, and uh, uh, knowing that you need to sometimes stay on the customer service uh, automated calls for <laughs> hours, uh, and you have to survive the DMV. Otherwise, you're good. I know, right? So well, they aim DMV and automated calls. That's it. Well, welcome and yes. freedom of speech here. You could talk about whatever you want and not get cut off hopefully you, you, the worst that can happen to you is just you're gonna have like an angry rant by a president that's it on, the, on twitter <laughs> that is true you get in a twitter war with trump oh well, wouldn't that be yeah, yes <gasps> you should that'll bring more press to this movie too <laughs> well do you miss uh heart surgery at all well not really um i I, I, I developed a habit that I should not miss the stuff that I left behind. I appreciate it, it's part of my life, but I don't just, I don't go on reminiscing on it. So this is all part of like what I am now. Everything that have happened in my life, all of the good decisions, the bad decisions, the stuff that I thought that I should have done, all of that is just a part of where I am right now. And I'm, hopefully I'm, uh, I will continue to be content and, and, and happy with where I am. So I am, I'm fine. I'm, I don't miss anything. Oh, yay. Mm-hmm. Well, congrats to you both. This documentary is so, so good. Like, well, we're going to, like, make sure everybody watches it. So you guys, make sure, check out this movie. Is it VOD or? Uh, so right now it's playing in Los Angeles mm-hmm. starting on April 10th. It will be on Netflix outside of North America. Okay. And in June, it will be on DVD, VOD, iTunes, uh, hopefully lots of other places for people to see it. And and if people want to see the film sooner on ticklinggiants.com, you can set up your own screening. You just fill out a form, and we do community screenings in colleges and high schools and things like that. <gasps> How amazing. Yeah, so there are lots of ways to see Tickling Giants. Yeah, go watch it, guys. All right. Thanks, Thank guys. You.